Good morning, everybody. I am standing on Estero Boulevard and Crescent. Taking a long shot down Estero Boulevard. You can see there's zero traffic. One repair truck coming down. We're gonna walk a little bit around here. See how the water is holding up. We are supposed to meet up with the mayor who was uh, at his house putting up some last minute items as high as he could. We're mainly the uh, breeze, as you can hear, and I don't want to poo poo the wind. If you can hear me, let me know. I actually have a, uh, a windscreen today. We have a major water event. And we've already had so much rain, standing water. I saw the Sheriff's Department posted that there were already roads flooded. So I wanted to take a walk down Crescent, then back out onto the beach through Times Square just to see how the water is holding up. Got the back bay here behind the... We're supposed to get the first wave of storm surge around three o'clock today. Even though the uh, hurricane isn't supposed to make land until about midnight, because of the high tide. So we'll, we'll see some storm surge earlier in the day. And then it, oh, I got a sand spur on my sock. You son of a beach. Let me see if I can get it off. This is, those things really suck. All right, got it. And then again, later on at seven, it picks up. Xfinity. And then mostly after midnight is when we're going to see the bulk of the storm here from like midnight to three. And then it's a, it's a whipping ass storm. So it's supposed to get out of here quick. So for th those of you that are new, <laughs> thank you, Keith. I'm gonna explain to everybody, you've all been asking, I'm going to explain. I see the internet is already giving me a hard time. My wife. Itch. My wife is in me on her way to Africa. Our house is secure as it's going to be in Gateway. My vehicle is not on the island. I rode my bicycle from Gateway to here yesterday. And my daughter and her boyfriend and their two dogs are with their our two dogs at our house in Gateway. I have a room in the most secure built most secure uh, building on the island and I'm not planning to go out in the middle of the storm just planning to be there a little bit before and then to go out after so you guys can see the properties because most if not all a pump a town a town pump oh it just looks like a generator Uh, so now I forgot what I was going to say. So it doesn't look like it's uh, flooded yet, but this is it, the area that usually floods on the beach here. Oh, the building. The building is, the Florida building code is the strictest, if, if not one of the strictest building codes in all of the United States for these kinds of reasons, for the house. So I'm up. 35 feet in the air. The storm surge prediction, prediction is 8 to 12. You can see they've got the big machines that I believe were cleaning sand up on the Matanzas Pass Bridge. I know, I'm, I know I'm cutting in and out. It's the internet. It's not the microphone this time. So every time I see the internet crap out, I stop talking. Not that you need to hear me, hear me talking. But you can see we do, got, we do have standing water. Here's the sign from yesterday, if you loot, we will shoot. Not much wind, just a little breeze right now, but it's coming. So once again, if you're just jumping on the storm surge, 
is expected to, uh, folks, just so you know, while I'm live, I, I know this, the internet is cutting in and out, not the sound. And that you can expect that over the next 48 hours for sure. When I was doing the videos during Ian, it was, it was way worse to try and get coverage. The town was just kind of catching up to picking up the sand that Helene brought. See how far down the sand is? From that last uh, storm surge, this street will be completely flooded. I have food for three days. Well, I have 10 protein bars, some ground turkey, five cans of Monster. I want to thank Margaritaville for putting me up so we can be down here. This town tried to do as much as they could to get the trash off the streets, but kind of just ran in, into out of time. Yeah, one of the things that I plan to do when it's safe, when the sun's out, is get on the bike and do the, the ride down the island to Santini Plaza. I promised Annette I'd go down and see how her books are. She raised her books. You guys probably saw the videos of Anita moving all of her stuff out of the Islander. And Annette moves her books up high. See Len over there with this guy. He's doing some last minute button up here. See what they're see what they're doing. Morning, guys. Morning. Oh, hello, Ed. Nice hat. How are you? Did you plan that hat there? Yeah. No. I don't think I remember selling you a pink hat though. He's always representing. What are you guys uh, planning, hoping for? I mean, well, what are you hoping hope, for? We moved a bunch of the kitchen equipment this morning up into the bar, and we took it up the pieces that would fit in the elevator we took way upstairs so we're hoping that it doesn't flood above our our landing so when you got when Helene came through did it make it up the steps here or did it stay below yeah. the steps so it went into the restaurant there probably okay probably right at the top of these yeah they're saying eight to ten but who knows I mean it's hard well, to predict what it is 15 right 15 I haven't 16? heard 15 for here no 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 no, no. not Ian. for here Ian I'm yeah. talking about oh is that how high it was yeah they kind of mumble one into the next. There's so many of them, so. Well, and it, again, you know, it all depends where the storm comes on shore, so. Yeah. You well, know, it did if wobble. If we're down, if, if uh, we only see storm surge five feet, we're fine. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be open Friday at 11, right? Yeah, well, we're going <laughs> to, we moved all the kitchen equipment, so we're going to tell you know the, the routine manager, now. he can come in a half hour early. <laughs> early you know, half hour early. Back, yeah. All right, you guys, I'll see you out there. All right, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Right. See, streets are dry right now, and actually the sun is trying to come through. You know, remember that when I was walking down on the south end during Helene, the sun was out, and we just knew that wasn't going to last. Boy, one right after another. I don't remember the name of the one before Helene. I don't think it was a storm. It was just flooding. Wahoos is ready. During Helene, they had, I don't know, two or three inches of muck from the sand. The sand and the water combined just, it, took, it almost turns into cement, so they had to pressure wash it all out. But you know, they got open pretty pretty quickly. So that was uh, Nervous Nellie's. Len is the owner and his family and employees there. So once again, for everybody that's new, that it has just joined us since the last a storm or two, we know what to do after the storm as far as getting people supplies and things that they need to clean up and things that they need to get back open and things that they need to get back in their house because they might uh, lose a lot of the stuff 
after they evacuated. So you can go to fmbstrong.org. That is an official 501c3. That is the 501c3 that is located at 820 Buttonwood, which is right on the other side of the bridge. 820 Buttonwood was the place that we all gathered before or after Ian, just trying to figure out what to do so that we could help people. It's a giant warehouse where Dan and Tim used to store their golf carts, which they all lost because the water got up and the muck got up into the um, warehouse and into the uh, machines, all the golf carts. So it turned into a warehouse, turned into a meeting place, and it stayed that way, continued to help people. And now is the time where we could really use help from folks all across the country. Thank you, Jane, FM, fmbstrong.org. You could do a financial contribution. All that money will be used for helping people on the beach and businesses on the beach. People walk in, grab what they need and go. Obviously, there's no cost. It's all free. You donate it and the folks there give it out. You know, because you, you got to have groups like that that work faster than the government. We found out last time around that that was the best way to do it. Government sometimes has a little bit too much bureaucracy. Not that they're going to be passing out too many bottles of water and shovels and things like that, but it's easier when the people do it. So once again, you guys don't have to worry about asking me if, if I'm safe or anything like that. You can see that yellow building right there. It's 35 feet in the air. And they were built to the Florida Building Code. Totally safe. My vehicle is in Gateway. My wife is in Minneapolis on her way to Africa. So yesterday, we're getting ready for a hurricane. She's getting ready to go to the airport to go to Africa, and she's calling me, because of course I had to get a workout in before the gym's all closed, and asking me where the floor cleaner was. And I was like, there's a category five hurricane coming. You're packed for Africa. Nobody's gonna give a shit whether our floor is clean or not. But that's, you know, I think it's her way of relieving stress. Yes, you're right, Suzanne. <laughs> hey, Doreen. We're actually planning on getting uh, in uh, a tow truck with the mayor. He's got a tow truck He's fixing his house for the last time before he moves on out. The sheriff's department is everywhere, folks. The lights are flashing. And this is what what we want to see is no action. That's Bella Mozzarella was one of the first businesses to open up after Ian. These guys worked their tails off to get this building fixed. Anybody that's new to Fort Myers Beach that hasn't been here, doesn't know what this is right here. This is Times Square. There used to be two rows of buildings here until Ian had other plans with those buildings, restaurant behind that fence, other restaurants down all the way to the sand, restaurants here, Placa was here, then Pete's Time Out, La Ola is on the end, there was um, Mangaritas in between, Anita had a store here, and Anita had a store here, she lost both of those stores, Tom has tried to reopen in a food truck. Of course, he's getting shit from FEMA that he had to move the food truck. Actually, I want to go over there and show you guys how he was able to get it off the island. So here's where the Times Square clock used to be. The Public Works Department removed it. It was the donated clock after the uh, first clock was totally uh, disintegrated, lost in Hurricane Ian. This is our pier, which will be built 30 years from now. Just kidding, it's a running joke that the pier is gonna take five or six years to build. 
This is Lynn Hall Park, where the county owns the parking lot. There used to be very nice uh, bathrooms where you see that sand over there, totally demolished in the storm two years ago. Now by those yellow markers over there, they have trailers, which they moved off the island. So I think we're still at least four years away from a new pier, which will be longer and wider. I'm guessing higher too. So I think, uh, I think there are a few people staying, not, certainly not a lot, certainly not as many people that stayed during Ian. But there, you know, people did email me that they're staying and we have like a list just in case. You can see the dark clouds over there, Sanibel Causeway, which is, there's also a curfew on Sanibel, 24 hours until further notice. Same, I think it's the same here. I think, you know, they did say 24 hours in the town's press release, but I, I'm sure they meant until further notice because the 24 hours would expire at 10 o'clock tonight, which really doesn't make sense. So you see how close the water is right now? And we're not even close. It, that storm surge is expected to be, uh, you know, five to 10 feet. This is four feet here. So it's certainly, if it's true, it's gonna connect to the bay. There's no doubt about it. One of the things too, you gotta to be careful of after the storm. I remember walking after the storm, not immediately after, but the sand was so, so soft. It was like quicksand in certain places. You would just, I mean, you wouldn't fall in and drown or anything, but you'd fall into, you know, your shins. So I'm gonna walk up and show you how Tom disconnected everything, took his trailers off. If you go to La Ola on Facebook, you can see that uh, how we got his trailers off. It just took him several hours to get them off. And the other sad thing is the Margaritaville pool was just cleaned out from all, uh, two, I think it was 2.8 or 1.8 million pounds of sand storm. You can see the sand pile here that they cleaned out of Stero Boulevard and Times Square. Times Square just, what was it, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, was filled. Barriers up, try and block the sand. Last time they had the orange barriers up, but they didn't hold. So the only thing left is the decking. <laughs> Wait, it was, I knew that was you, Alan. There it was, they're all gone. I don't know if it even makes sense to come back. I don't, I'm sure Tom wants to come back. He loves the beach, works his ass off to get those things open, all the money he spent on it. Can't imagine Stero, so just imagine all those folks that are new that that Gulf of Mexico is like a raging, angry force of water that comes over that seawall all the way across. And even with the last storm was at the base of the bridge up there. That's how far it went. And also down to uh, Bill. You got um, whatever day it was, Monday. And how many, how many did you have? 100 rooms. 100 rooms like sold. Like four or 500 people. Holy crap, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. So what did you do to kind of try and keep the sand out or keep the water out? It seems like it might be more of a water event than a wind event, but who knows? Well, I, th I tell you, we're more prepared this time than we were in. Okay. Uh, we had bought these, uh, there's these panels that bolt for the elevator shafts. Yeah. You'd have to go down there and see them, but they, they literally have a seal on them. They bolt to the wall and the floor. It seals up everything on the ground level. So So does it save the elevators, you think? It saves or? the elevators. You put the elevators at halfway. Yeah. Because you want the weights up yeah. and the elevator up. Uh-huh. 
and then you, we seal them up, and uh, they, we shouldn't lose the elevators. What about the pool? You, you, you know you're getting sand in it. Oh, yeah, it's given. But you know the routine, too. <laughs> yeah. Pool, pool is definitely getting sand in it. I mean, it that's inevitable. Did but you? The other plus, too, is we don't have any cars on the property. That was what the other problem was, is the cars got washed and then hit the transformers and knocked them off, and then it took longer to get the So they became projectiles. projectiles. That's how much... I have no vehicles on the property But that's all. how crazy and violent that water gets, that, that use, they could use vehicles as projectiles to damage other things. That's why I was walking up and down. You see some things, like you just know these things are going to fly out of here yeah. when the water comes through here. It's the bigger here. stuff, like... Uh, like um, the, the dumpsters, like those rolling, I mean, they'll... And the porta-potties. Porta-potties, anything that's heavy metal is just going to take stuff out. But, you know, we got all that cleared out and uh, sealed up, so... So what's your plan? What are you what are you doing now? You're going over there to just kind of do final touches? I just did final touches. I'm going to head uh, home. I've got, there's a team on site, so um, they're, they're going to ride it out. They're obviously safer there than they were at their own homes, so... It's a fire chief over yeah, there, so I wonder if Yeah. All right, man. Yep. Well, good luck, and I'll safe, see you man. afterward. Yep. Let's see you afterward. Let's see if I can get the chief on here. The mayor is on his way, so we're going to get a ride with him. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a pan over real quick. All right. Let's see if we can get the chief, fire chief on. See what his thoughts are. Try to get out of that dead spot there. That was Bill Wachulis, the general manager of um, the pink shell. Of course, they had to stand in our crash probably before pictures. So we're standing at the bus stop at the end of the bridge. And then we're gonna go take a ride with the mayor when he shows up a little bit. Pretty calm right now. Just don't want to get in the way of anything he's doing. Still music playing in one of these buildings here. Makes it see the garbage cans will probably projectiles over there. Got a sec. We're a little live here, so if you could chat with me real quick, just sure. to kind of give us a, an idea of just hold it. Yeah, yeah, okay. nice and close. Give us an idea of what you, what's your thought on the storm surge? Where do you think we're going to wind up from what you see? Well, watching the weather, I mean, I think we're all seeing it that they have upgraded it to 8 to 12 feet here in the Lee County area. Um, and, you know, we're, we're heeding that warning. So um, it looks like we've been up and down the island. Looks like people have, are also heeding the warning. Yep. Most people are evacuated, which we appreciate. Um, so, you know, we're planning for the worst. Um, and if it keeps wobbling south, you know, it, it can go up from there. So, Do you think it's going to be more of a water event than a wind event, or it's going to be both? Well, the, the storm's coming at us more perpendicular than, than we had with Ian or, or Helene, so um, I think the storm's going to come and go, but um, it's an intense storm, and they're now saying Category 4 when it makes land. So oh, 4. Yep. Yes, yeah, so, uh, you know, a so low 4. Give people an idea of 10 feet from what we're looking at now. Like, how how is that? It sometimes, even in my mind, which right. is small, it doesn't translate right. to what what we're going to see later tonight. Well, I think if you want 10 feet, I mean, if you're looking and you got this building, you know, that top of that building's pro approximately 10 feet. So, you know, it's uh, you know potentially you're looking at all your first floor uh, occupancies taking water again. When you um, when you looked around, did you feel like enough of the possible projectiles were removed or there's still some things around that are going to cause other damage that's where a lot of the other damage came from things flying houses right. flying yeah i mean um you know a lot of the construction sites so for, for the uh last few days in preparing for this our uh our life safety specialists our inspectors were out in the field okay. meeting with uh, contractors on job sites reminding them to pick up their debris and get get rid of everything they can up and down the boulevard i see a lot of the contractors have done that there are still some dumpsters out and other construction materials, um, but a lot of it has been picked up and anything can become, you know, flying projectile. So, you know, all these buildings under construction, um, you know, a lot of these buildings under construction aren't fully secure right. until they're all as completely assembled. So, so when you, um, uh, what, what is this, what do you think this wind speed is right now? 10? Uh, yeah, maybe 10 or 15. So when it hour. gets to 40 miles an hour, explain to people what the what the uh, what what the process is. So for us, yeah, we monitor the weather, and and because of our our heavier vehicles, 
Um, they're big, so they can they can move up on the bridges and stuff. So as I said, at 40 or 45 miles an hour, we pull back to shelter. We, we stop operating. And then you wait. How long do you wait? We it, watch it goes 40. We watch, and when it gets to about 40 mile an hour, we'll start sending our smaller vehicles out and start doing recon or, or you know, surveying the district and, and seeing when we can get in, what we're dealing with. Um, and uh, just met with the town. We're working together on this. So um, I've talked about it before when we've done the interviews. There's an order to things. So um, when we come back to the district, we're going to focus on life first, um, and then we're going to secure hazards, and then we're going to focus on property. Are you uh, so the 911 calls will be ordered if there are any? They'll be ordered mm -hmm. or answered how afterward? So so when we stop running emergencies, we will we will uh, stack the calls. We basically take them from 911. Um, and we order them in priority. So um, it's not necessarily who called first. I'm going to go to a cardiac arrest before I go to a, you sure. know, a, a minor cut. So um, we'll prioritize those calls, and then we'll start running them as soon as we can get back to the people who made the calls. And finally, are you prepared for a search and rescue mission? We are. So um, I had a meeting this morning, or I, I attended a meeting this morning at the state level, and um, the state has uh, incident management teams and search and rescue teams staged already, um, both on the East Coast to come this way and in Orlando. So the state does a tremendous job preparing our local incident management or um, our local urban search and rescue team um, is deployed within the county. And they're pre-staging two teams, um, one over in the Iona McGregor area and another one in the Benita area. So they're ready to roll as soon as we need them. And I've gotten a couple of emails that I forwarded to you. If people have evacuated and they want to make sure that their homes or condos don't get broken into because you guys are worried that somebody might be in there sick or dead right. or whatever, what is, right. what is, tell them what the process is so that you don't, they don't have to worry about that. First, I appreciate you spreading that message. So we are getting people that are are telling us um, I'm staying on the island and this is my address cool. um, and providing us contact information. We're also getting people that are saying, I have left. Don't knock down my door if you're doing search and rescue. So um, when the search and rescue teams go around the island, if they see any indication that somebody might be in a unit um, and we can't confirm whether somebody's in, in a house or not, um, then we have to force our way in. Um, the same way we would if a building was on fire. Um, so, so the people that are that are out there that went through Ian and understand what that looks like, they're they're notifying us. So, uh, for anybody who's watching, if you're on the island, let you let us know that. Let us know where you are and your phone number. We can pick up the phone and call you afterwards. You can tell us you're good, and we we can check you off. Um, and then if you if you've left the island and you want us to know that your house is is, is vacant, uh, you can let us know that as well. The easiest way to do that is to send us an email info at fmbfirefl.gov. Okay. One more time, info at fmbfirefl.gov. And folks, that list is not going to be used for anything. It's not going to be posted anywhere. The government isn't going to steal your information. That is vital information for the fire department to have for the reasons that I don't think people knew before Ian. Yeah. So yeah. how the guy, We're every time talking. I hear that, I say yeah. to people before, doing good. appreciate so, you, appreciate uh, you uh, and man. everything coming on with us whenever we have everybody here on Fort Myers Beach. And we're I see the internet keeps crapping out, so when I see that, I will stop talking. I appreciate the fire chief coming on, and I'll walk across the street here so I can get out of the water. I can see, as the fire chief said, a lot of people, if not the majority of people, have left the island. So that's good. That's good. The goal is zero people dying. Zero deaths is the goal. If anybody was watching and can post in that email address that the chief mentioned, that would be very helpful. So just to kind of recap, he said, if you left the island and you don't want anyone knocking in your door, knocking down your door because there may be a search and rescue, you want to send the information your information to that email address. Friggin' internet keeps crapping out. Captain Layla. 
All right, I think this might be the mayor over here. Perfect timing. Gonna get the mayor on as we drive around a little bit. You guys, let me know if you can hear him when we go. We are live. I gotta do another call here at 918, right. so. Sounds good. You could kick me out anytime. No, you can stay in there. Oh. All right. I think it's another interview, actually. Well, Reuters. Oh. All right, we're going to go for a ride with the mayor, everybody, after he stops talking to the uh, town manager. Everybody's making sure things are covered here. So stay tuned. Okay. Fuck along. And then as soon as, you, um, as soon as you know what time they're going to be at Target. You there you go. Um, you can get the... Okay. So, give us an update on how you think things are going. Well, it's uh, not ideal. It sounds like it shifted a little further south. All right, I, gotta, I think this is that other. All right. Why don't I okay. take that off you so. All right. Just doing a, we'll listen to the interview. Maybe if you put it on speaker, we can hear it. Hello, this is Dan. <laughs> DJ, that was perfect. That was perfect. All right. We're going to take. Did you go down the south end already? No, not yet. Oh, that'd be great if we could go down yeah. that way. Yeah, I'll head that way. Sweet. We're going to go take a ride down the south end, everybody. We are not staying out in this. Don't you guys worry. Just ran into the fire chief. I think they're leaving at 45 miles an hour. Yep. No. Have you been down the oh, pink shot? No, I just ran into Bill though. It'd be interesting to go down there because then I can get out and he, uh, while you're on the phone there, okay. tell me about some of the boards he put up. I'd like to see them. All right, everybody, the internet on my end is kind of crappy. Okay, thank you guys for posting that from the fire department. So you don't get your door kicked down. Very nice. If you are staying, maybe you should write your social security number on your arm in a Sharpie, just in case. Our newspaper friend from the news press. Yep. That'd be nice if I had my own Starlink. Yeah, thanks for having me. somebody more important than me. Yeah, yeah, 100% accurate. We also obviously just had uh, right a, couple north end. Couple days, or a couple weeks ago. Just to let you guys know, the video does that, get but, uh, stuck. Yeah, this is an eerie internet, reminder. Not my microphone ago. or anything. It's just some spots where it kicks off. Sure, it is up here. See that dumpster right there? That thing is going to be, hopefully, it's heavy enough. Got a garage door open with garbage yeah, we, cans. Yeah, we took about five and a half feet of surge from Helene. All those things are going to be projectiles. You know, that might be heavy enough. Left on, on the Gulf. So if they, the water you get the 10 feet the storm surge. Uh, right now we're in that 8 to 12. This is going to connect surge. from the Very Gulf chill. to the bay here. Uh, for anybody that's new to Fort Myers down. Beach, we'll that water will connect with the Gulf of Mexico. We've been through it. I think everybody has needed the water. serious water damage. Island, so we're as ready as we can be. We're driving up toward Bowditch. We are on the north end, Linda. Heading toward Bowditch. You can see we got standing yeah, water already from the rain. The, uh, zones have been evacuated. It is pretty much a ghost town down here. Uh, I'll be down here with uh, Fire and Rescue and the County Sheriff's Office. 
until the winds get about 40, 45, and then we will all... Where are you guys watching from? Type in where you're watching from. That'd be kind of neat to see. We're going to be coming up on the... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get on the other side of 75, which is just outside the event. Coming up on the house. Now, if this house doesn't fall down in this storm, I'll be shocked to shit. Oops, sorry. I said shit. This house right here. This is the house with the beehive. And the owner doesn't think it needs to be knocked down. Lexington, Kentucky, Minnesota. We are at Bowditch Park, owned by Lee County. Yeah, Still you know, the last two years have been a lot of under repairs from Hurricane Ian. And and we've had a lot Michigan, of support, Costa Rica. State that's come in and help and, and people that uh, come up. We're and picking up a little like bit. Myself, and, and sent a lot of help. So um, we were just, I think, over the the hump where we, we knew we were on our way back and. See, that thing is not this tied is down, so that's going to be years. projectile, a lot of construction and equipment. We'll get at least some water vent and Hopefully and the fences like make it. Here's the pink shell. Similar to, to the Bill was just telling us about the uh, elevators that they blocked off. Still some sand here from the beach. Yeah, I think we'll certainly have some of that. Yep, we see had they blocked that off the elevators to hopefully save but the, the elevators there. The interesting there. thing about this little seven mile, seven mile, seven mile island is it's a. Uh, There's the pink shell. Pretty resilient. They are used to doing our, this. Our All the guests. He said he had and, uh, 100 rooms sold, 400 guests work, so that they had to I'm evacuate. Sure we'll a couple, but we'll gain some back. I don't know why they don't take them down, but there's going to be a lot of porta potties in the in the back bay. These new buildings were coming along nice. We're going to take a ride down to the south end. Do you even know who that was? <laughs> Just some media organization. You have no idea. All right. We were stalling for time there. Sorry about that. That's all right. That was a. that I would do it yesterday. Uh, Very good. All right, everybody. We're with the mayor of Fort Myers Beach, and we're heading down to Times Square from Bowditch, and we're going to take a little ride down to the south end. Did you get all your stuff at your house as high as you could? or As high as I can. I just don't have enough trailer space to take everything with you. You know, I was just talking with Tim, you know, my business partner. And, you know, it's an eerie feeling when you're, you know, you're walking out of your house the last time. Yeah. I mean, they're saying the chief, we just interviewed the fire chief, and he was saying that he just heard it's it's closer to 10 again. It's like 8 to 10. I, I said, I must have missed that. Yeah, so, it's, it sounds like it's Sarasota. It looks like that we're out of the, the landfall cone, if you will, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah. We learned from Ian that you know, landfall was north of us up by Cato Casa, and we took the brunt of the, yeah. the storm surge. So further south it moves, the worse it's going to get for us. Uh, as I've said before, I'm really concerned with, you know, if you look at what you're seeing, we don't have anything blocked. Not going to block it, yeah. The storm surge that comes in and just the five foot, six foot we got from, from Helene. Yep. Uh, you can see here at, you know, at the, the park. It's going to... It's still sand left over from that, but we, um... Uh, the we're, thing... We're in for, we're in for uh, a lot of cleanup. The, um... The thing that is interesting is that you were trying to get all the trash picked up from Helene, but it was impossible. I mean, you didn't have enough time to do it. So there's still pockets of, uh, of trash in different places. But the thing that I see just going up here to the north end is the porta potties. It, some of those porta potties weren't even secured down, and there's dumpsters that have garbage in them. They're going to, like these tables here, they're, they're going to wind up in the bay. They're not secured down. I mean, I guess people are like, I did as much as I could, or... Well, now, those yes. vehicles up on the bridge there, are they yours from cleaning up the sand, or are they, are they stationed there for the cleanup? No, uh, those look like they're boat lifts, probably from Moss Marine. Or oh, Rio okay. Marinas would be my guess. Um, some of the heavy equipment up top, I believe, is F-Dots. 
um, just getting ready well, okay because they were already we're, here you know we're staging because remember after Helene this area right here you couldn't get past it there was so much sand so what we did is they're gonna keep some of their stuff around so hopefully um, tomorrow morning when this passes we can it's just a, trying to be as prepared as we can and now it's in, in mother nature in God's hands what do you, how do you, like these things are probably going to come, well, I mean, who knows how deep we they're see, in. We put these concrete barriers yeah. and pin them together over here yep. to try to keep at least some of the surge from from going, you know, through Times Square and, and taking any more businesses out. But um, If it's going to be way higher than that, then I mean, just it, go it, over. If, if anything, hopefully it'll it'll break the wave action. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you know, still has stuff on it, but you know, we're at the point now where going to be what it is at this point. Yeah, Have guys. you heard from anyone um, that is still on the island that needs help getting I, off? Or? I did hear from one person. I, guys, the uh, the internet just craps out every once in a while, so you're just gonna if you want to stick stick with us, I, I we'll just we won't be talking when the internet craps out. I can promise you, you're not gonna miss anything. Uh, there was some guy uh, across from Publix who said he he thought he was gonna get help towing his car out, but he he didn't get the help, so he's afraid he's going to lose his car. I said I'd bring it up, but I, don't, I mean, I don't know where to get a tow truck from at this point. But yeah, there's up here. There's a Tesla that someone parked. In the beach oh, access. no kidding. Well, we'll go by. You'll see it. You know, there's. I did have someone that reached out to me this morning that was concerned with the curfew that they wouldn't be able to leave the island. That is 100% not true. I gotcha. They're not going to stop you from leaving the island, but they will stop you from coming back on the island. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, they don't want to stop people. And, I, you know, the when the press release, and you can probably clarify this, when the press release first came out about the curfew, it said 24 hours. I'm sure you meant until further notice that it's going to, you know, until the storm passes. Because yeah, it's not going to end tonight at 10 o'clock where people can go back outside. It's no. just going to be worse. They're saying, I think, around 2 o'clock is when it's supposed to make landfall. Yep. You'll have winds around 100 miles an hour about that time. So it's going to be, a you know, an overnight event at high tide. So you, if you're here... Leave. You think, do you think with a storm surge of eight to ten feet, all these fences are coming down? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Let me just look at these came down with five feet of storm surge. Yeah. It's you know now you're going to have the wind on top of it. We didn't really have the rain and the wind uh, with Helene, and now we're going to have it. So you can see the high tide is already starting to back up in the storm drains. It's, it's coming. I did give Dan a mic, so let me let me just uh, I'll I'll ask him a question and then I'll pass him this one, or maybe I turned it off turn instead it of turning on here. Yeah, that one's working for sure. Nobody needs right. to hear me. How about I just hold it in the middle? How was that? Wait, is that better? It off. I might have bumped it when I was oh, trying yeah. to. It was off. We're good now. So, how are you feeling about how people evacuated? I'm really really I'm happy that people have heeded the warning. I, I do know a few people have decided to stay, but. You know, you can't you can't make everyone leave. We just hope that they reconsider and and uh, there must be some news crews there. They got cameras set up. Um, there's well, here's a trailer that that didn't leave. Yeah, there's a few. The the, the goods was still there. You see, uh -huh. there's still some waste management dumpsters. Why did not that waste management? Sorry, it's, it's okay. Another you company. guys can hear perfectly now. We got a crystal clear signal, so. So uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you about was um, uh, how is the town prepared, like, to clean up, like, after? I mean, I know you got to assess the damage, and what, so what's the process? I know the chief says got the search and rescue teams ready to go if they need them. Yep. Hopefully they won't need them. And what's the process of events after the storm passes, which it sounds like will be tomorrow afternoon it's coming so fast? Yeah, as of right now, that's the initial, the initial time frame. So... Search and rescue will come on when the winds get down below 45 miles an hour, and they will start to do their assessment. Uh, they will then give us the all clear as to when we can start allowing people back on the island. Gotcha. Um, once they do that, then if you don't have your pass, you can go to the target. We don't know exactly what time they're going to be out there. It may be Thursday afternoon, but it could be Friday, um, depending on what you know the storm and the conditions. But uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we get it out there through you, through our Facebook page, and in every, whatever media outlets we can to let people know when our staff will be out at the, at the target. 
I guess there was a good turnout yeah. um, the other day that went pretty smooth. I haven't heard any complaints. So I, I just want to give people a, a noogie or a purple nurple for waiting till the last minute to get their friggin' pass when you guys have yeah, been announcing you know, that I got for a, a long time. I got an email from a condo association uh, basically reading me the riot act as to why we we didn't call them to let them know that they needed to get their passes. Oh, that's a crack of shit right and, there. You guys have been saying that for the longest time. Well, Sorry for about two, my French. For two right. years we've been... What's going to happen to that building when a 10-foot storm surge comes through there? Is it finally going to fall down? This one and yeah. the one with the beehive, if those two don't fall down... I'll be shocked. Yeah. Yeah. That... Um, so, yeah, the, the passes will be available at that target. <clears throat> You'll also be able to get them from the ace hardware parking lot again don't ace has nothing to do with this right, right. don't go into ace hardware don't or go target. into target and ask for the passes they do not they'll look at you funny um, you'll look for the town of fort myers beach white van with the tent um, and they'll be able to help you get your your re-entry pass contractors will be able to get passes just try to get something from whomever you're working on um do you Whatever want the house. contractors to wait any amount of time? or you're, Well, you want... we're going to give preference to residents, obviously, okay. first. Um, so those of you that are not here and want to get your people on to start remediating as fast as possible, we okay. understand that. But, you know, we need to get our residents on first, and, and we'll get the contractors on as closely thereafter as we can. Kerry, it's the target on San, San Carlos. San Carlos Boulevard, just north of the uh, Ace Hardware. Yeah, and the... The, the Target parking lot is filled with trailers and RVs and cars that I think yes. are trying to get out of the way of the storm. So the trailer for the town hall was closer to the road, closer to San Carlos, in front of Terra Nostra? Terra Nostra, yeah. Okay. We were right next. Now, that doesn't mean that's where we'll be the next time. Um, I did have some, I did have a couple people call and say, I don't see them here, and they had driven around the parking lot. But it's, it just takes, takes a little time. Hopefully, they'll be in the same spot. They're, they're trying to get as close to San Carlos Boulevard as possible to make it as easy as possible to find. But they'll be in a big white van that can haul like 15 or 20 people. Okay. Uh, that'll have a Town of Fort Myers Beach sticker on the side of it and either a green or white tent, I think. That, that vehicle is not going to make it, that's no. for sure. So, uh, right up here is that Tesla. For folks that are new to the uh, Facebook page, we're riding around with Mayor Dan Allers of Fort Myers Beach. And uh, he's given us kind of a before look of Estero Boulevard. There's pretty, there's, you know, there's standing water all along the way. And there's going to be a lot more water after the storm. Yes. And you can see there's some cars over here and the sheriff is having none of it. Just, that's that Tesla that's been there. Someone parked that car there yesterday and it's just left there. That car is, that's one of going to be the ones that catches fire. There's some more people getting off the road here. Yep. yep. You are allowed to leave the island. You are not going to get back on it. I guess. I mean, I don't know if somebody caught a late flight or something and they want to get back onto their house. I don't know. Was the, will the sheriff tell them no or will let them, let them come to the I house? I doubt that they're going to be able to get on at this point. It's okay. too close to that storm being here. My, our guess is right around noon it'll be to the point where, you know, it's not safe to be on the, on the road. So um, it could be a little bit later depending on what that 11 o'clock model says. But um, this, is a, this is a weird, eerie storm that has been slow developing as far as being able to give real details with yeah. storm surge and landfall and um, so far we do know it's you know sarasota manatee county area we are out of the cone of landfall if you will lee county is but that doesn't mean it couldn't land just south in Punta Gorda or you know the further south it comes the worse the surge is going to be for us and right now we're in the 8 to 12 so it can only go up from there or 8 to 10 whatever it is yeah i i do more know, than helene let's put it that way yeah, and that was a pain in the ass. I do notice a lot of dumpsters and porta potties. I mean, it's. Uh, yes. I guess we'll see where they all wind up. There are yeah. a lot of porta, a lot more porta potties than I thought. <laughs> on well, this there's a lot right of dumpsters, now. and you know, we we've tried to do everything we can do to get them to get them out of here. We just don't have the resources or the manpower to be able to go and move all of it for them. You know, we we're trying to take care of our stuff first, and then work on. Other things I would see. Look at there's a bunch of debris. You're not debris, but you know construction yeah, equipment that's... material that should have been taken out of here. But um, they will, I'm sure, have a. You know the 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 un, the real sad side of the whole thing is that so many of these people have gotten to the point where they're almost rebuilt or they are rebuilt and they just they just got a first floor back and then it got hammered. Yeah. Two weeks ago and you know, here's another dumpster and a porta potty not tied down and now you know. 
this is going to get in their first floor. They just is, I mean, uh, unless there's some kind of crazy miracle, they're going to get water in their first floor. Yeah, I mean, if we if we uh, get that eight to ten feet of storm surge, pretty much every house, I would think on the island will have water. Obviously, if you're up on stilts, you're not going to have water up there, but you'll certainly have water within your you know your lower level. And if you also look, you see a lot of people are leaving their doors open on this one. Their, their lower level doors. Well, I to did let the notice water that. Which, yeah, I did notice that. But you so. should have no debris in there either. Like I did see a couple of garage. Yeah, most doors people open. have them all cleaned out. They're still cleaned out from from Helene. So, you know, the water is going to pass through. Which, as I said earlier, is just going to push it further inland and down the side streets, which is is not going to be good for the houses that did make it through Ian. Yeah. And these, all these, uh, all these porta potties that we're seeing are going to be wind up at the bottom of the back bay, most likely, unless they get hit, unless they get stopped by a house or something, and it's, they it's just finish cleaning out the back bay. <laughs> it's it's hard to say. I mean, you know, the the lazy coconut tappers that were at Tuckaway after Ian, they found one on Bunch Beach, they found one down here in Ibis, they found one somewhere else. I mean, they've, it's, you just never know where things are going to end up once they get into that surge. Um, it, you Folks, just, if you're if you're just again if you're I, I try to uh, be a little more uh, basic or or get more background for all these new people that are joining, you can see a lot of these houses on this side of the street that were being rebuilt, that are being rebuilt, that are not finished being rebuilt. That's really where all the dumpsters and the porta potties are, because all the construction work. And uh, so that that's what you're seeing. You may be seeing it for the first time, but this is over two years. And we feel like, at least I felt like, the construction on the residential side was going a lot faster than, I mean, people expected, and certainly a lot faster than the commercial construction. Yeah, it sure, it sure was. Um, you know, a lot of homes have just been completed or real close to being completed. Um, a lot of people just had moved into their house, and now they're moving their stuff back out. So, I mean, just when we come back around, this yeah. one's just about ready to be completed, and that was completely devastated when after Ian, so... There's some people I don't think they're going to be able to take it. It's just going to be too much. It's it's possible, you know. Um, we, you know, we everybody handles this a little bit different. It's it's certainly not easy, and you know, it's an unfortunate hand we've all been dealt. But at this point, like I said, it's in God and in Mother Nature's hands. So hopefully, everybody's done everything they can do to make sure their property is secure as possible, and we'll we'll see what's left come tomorrow. Yeah, and they uh, they know the routine now too. They know the cleanup routine. You guys got the sand. There are sand piles, maybe not this far down, but there are huge chunks of sand piles on Estero Boulevard. Yeah. That by the next day, or probably by the end of that day, they were all gone. Yeah, we had uh, we had good partnership with with our staff, Lee County, um, and then we had ICS and and uh, Andrew Sightwork, two contractors that we have on the island, doing other projects pulled off to try to get that sand picked up as fast as possible in the event that this storm was coming um, just to make the cleanup as easy as possible or not not more difficult and to your point they did a good job of getting it done within a few days and you can see it's it's pretty well clean um, you know another building that should have been knocked down but yeah so the, the, well, uh, that, I don't know how well that fence is going to hold up and there's so much debris in the middle of that window this every bed and refrigerator and lamp was not not taken out none of the debris was removed from that right so it'll be interesting to see on thursday or friday where, where all that winds up and again we could talk about i did earlier today we could talk about anita and annette just got their businesses open in the mm -hmm. santini plaza and anita's got to be a wreck i mean she just opened her place and then not two weeks later or whatever it was she's taking every everything back out i know I just, it, and you know, there's no doubt that that if it holds true, that building's getting water. Probably. It's, it's, I don't think they got any. Um, if I remember her telling me that they they didn't get any water from Helene, but this is going to be more water than that. So, uh, you know, eight to ten feet, pretty much every every structure will have water. We're coming up on Leonardo Arms. Oh man, I don't even I don't even want to think about the storm surge at the back of that building that they been dealing with with the seawall and the beach renourishment boy and again the beach renourishment it'll how much more sand do you guys lose from a storm like this that you just put out there yes well <laughs> yeah i mean it, it held up pretty well on the north end the renourishment part of it held up pretty well um during helene but 
again, that wasn't the wind event that we're going to see here. It's not going to have the surge that we're going to see here. So, so we're going to see. We're, we're going to have a lot of sand on on Estero Boulevard. Yeah, a lot of construction debris in these two lots here. A lot of porta potties. For the right afterward. Hopefully, they'll all be in the same spot. Yeah, so. hopefully. And you know, some of these mobile. We found one of these mobile minis in the middle of North Estero Boulevard after Helene. So they do float. Yeah, or at least not, they move. And it's not its not just like, and you can see the Sheriff's Department is down here too. And it's not just like the water comes up a little bit and then just kind of floats out easily. It comes out in giant, vicious, violent waves. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I've seen it firsthand. It is, it, it's not, you can already see it starting to get kind of angry out there, but. Yeah, they said three o'clock. I think Zach uh, on uh, Wink said the first high tide is three o'clock. So there's going to be some at three, some at seven, and then the main event will be uh, after midnight. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of a lot of Lee County Sheriff's Office presence yes. out here. Um, so and there has been a lot of the only traffic we've seen so far, at least since I've been down here this morning, is people either taking their campers off last minute or moving things out at last minute we'll take a drive um, through there on the way back unless yeah. you want to stay in a stereo it's up to you no I want everybody to see what's going on and you note that the sheriff's department is here to prevent looting and to make sure that people are uh, not outside when it gets vicious there is a curfew in effect for at least until the storm ends you can see how big the beach is behind these buildings look at how far away the water is and it's, it's going to make it here that's how sick it is that's how sick it is you can see how i mean that's got to be a couple hundred yards and it's all of course you can see all the damage from ian's underneath this building here that it is proof that it came from that far away a lot of construction debris here construction materials nbc was down here before reporting it as debris from Hurricane Ian. It's not debris from no, Hurricane Ian. It's, it's construction, construction materials right. they're trying to rebuild. Yeah, there's, there's uh, other than, you know, the derelict houses that are still standing, there's not a lot of debris left from Hurricane Ian that hasn't now, been Now, did up. this sand come from the beach or is this filler sand? No, this looks something? like it's from, it looks like they dug a hole there. Oh, okay. Um, that's not from the beach. I'm not sure where that came from. But. There is a generator. I thought it was the town's pump. Now, maybe it is a town's pump because the Crescent by Margaritaville floods. Is that a generator for some reason outside or? Uh, so those those two, there's two generators that are right yeah, there at the corner yeah. of Crescent and Fifth. They are um, Xfinity's to power the internet. Okay, so when well, those generators go down. Xfinity was filling the gas, yeah. ge the generator up, which made no sense to me. I thought they were the town's well, generators. No, that's uh, that's uh, Xfinity's that they're, they need those to, to um, power the internet for as long as they can, but. It's a ghost town, that's for sure. If anybody from expanding these listing, if uh, when the water starts coming in, if we can take those out of there. Oh, we'll, they're going to get soaked, we'll, yeah. Well, we'll certainly take them out, and, or Margaritaville has offered to take them out and put them up higher. Head back in here. This is Tarpon Road. Those of you that are new to our Facebook page, some of these roads are... They have their own HOAs and their own little neighborhoods, and it's really cool. They all stick together. They all help each other out all up and down the island like that. You can see some of the houses were rebuilt. Some are still hammered from Ian. Some were built to code. This is Lagoon Road. One house right here that looks like it, it was either repaired or did okay, and then the one right next to it still under construction. Could use a little paint. <laughs> yes, the garage door either is open or was never put back on. It looks like some people have put some plywood up, a lot of storm shutters up, but you don't see a lot of people, which is yep. encouraging. That's I, exactly I what we, yeah, you know, as I've said before, the. The less people that are here that we have to search for after, the faster we get people back on the island. Yeah, and the other thing too is uh, you don't see uh, looky lose, and hopefully we can keep that to a minimum afterward because it just slows the traffic down for people trying to get to their home and repair their home. Yeah, 
Exactly. People want to get it opened up and, and cleaned out as fast as they can. Um, and we'll do everything we can to get everybody on as fast as possible. Hopefully Weird. that person is getting off or oh, that's going to be a... Oh, it looks like they're tying down their stuff. That's going to be a nice vehicle that... Oh, they are leaving? Yeah, they're over here on the left. It looks like they were tying down some cedar shakes, it almost looked like, but there was three of them tying it down. So you guys have seen how far away the beach is right across from where we are. Now you can see the back bay. And yeah, this water is going to connect. Or the lagoon. The back bay is actually on the other side of Bay Beach there. So that's the the buildings you see in the background. That's Bay Beach Lane, the Bay Beach community. And then the okay. back bay is on the other side of those. And all these empty lots most likely had a house on them beforehand. Or... They did. They did, yeah. Sorensen says, the town did a great job getting people off the island. I agree 100%. You know, the thing, you guys didn't wait, man. You had that special meeting on Sunday, and then I was even like, wow, they're evacuating right out of the gate. Nobody else did it. Took Sanibel a day or two later to do it. Took uh, Lee County a day or two later to get A and B zones evacuated. So I think that really helped people get the message, this is the real deal, and they should start getting ready to get off the island. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, I, I was off island last night, and you know, it's it's everything. Gas stations are all covered up; they're closed down. I mean, there's on east side of 75, pretty much everything is shut down for the most part. People have moved inland, which which is encouraging to see. You know, Fort Myers. I haven't not I have not been out to Sanibel. I have not been up to Captiva or Pine Island, but um, I did hear on the radio last night with Trey Radel that they there was a a lady or a gentleman. In, Matt Lachey that's absolutely refusing to leave. And, boy, I tell you, Matt Lachey is, is pretty low-lying. Oh, you know? yeah. I don't know that I'd want to be. Um, and, there's, and I don't know that there's any tall, you know, tall-built homes out there that I've seen in a while, but to, to each his own. But, we, you know. You see, these guys these guys just reopened a few months ago. Do you yeah. think those air conditioning units are high enough? Um, for what? Uh, depends on how high the... the Depends on how high the uh, surge gets. They're higher than they were before, but okay. Uh, I think they were sitting down on the ground before. But there's a few properties that I've noticed that have the air conditioners elevated like that a couple feet. But time will tell. I sure, I sure hope that those are going to be fine. That means that it, you know we're going to get a little yeah. bit of water. But yeah, hopefully this whole ride is a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, so who? what was the conversation like? Because this was going around on social media a, a few days. One lady, I didn't. I don't know what social media site it was on, but one lady suggested the town take the clock down, and they were beating their ass up about it. Like, I don't know what they were saying because it wasn't on my page. And we'll a couple a people... through Bay Beach because I know people want to see back in there too if they haven't. And I know a couple people even on my page brought it up, and I, I didn't respond to it because I didn't know what to say. And so wh what was the conversation like? to decide to take the clock down um honestly I, I wasn't involved in that conversation i just i last night andy told me that they had taken the, the clock down i i didn't even notice to be honest with you yeah. so I, I i think it was a staff decision to take it down to make sure it was preserved so, so people were crazy happy about it it was just it's one of those things where something so small means so much to you know to so many people down here to see that clock and the picture that Nicole, your PIO, posted was just, it was all over the news. It was, we, we got so many comments about it. So yeah, that, uh, that, uh, it's a little thing the, like that. All the kudos goes to Andy and his staff for that. They're the ones that, uh, that did all the work and got it down. And it just shows you that they're trying to do everything they can to, yeah. to protect as much stuff as they can. Yeah, I saw him driving around yesterday with, uh, Nicole and just kind of surveying things. Yeah, he and Nicole and Jeff were down here as well. Um, I think they're up on the north end How's of the island. How's the town staff holding up, knowing that Good. they have to work, but they also have their own stuff they have to deal with? Good. Uh, I, I was on the phone with Andy when you first got in. Uh, town Hall is going to be closed on Friday, obviously, as well. So yep. you were just letting me know that they'll be getting that out to to people. Um, so We are in Bay Beach, yep, this Bay is, Beach Lane. It's the, uh, it used to be a golf course is what you're looking at there. How many holes? Uh, I think it was, I want to say it was not, I, I never was able to golf at it. It had closed shortly after I moved here. Um, someone listening will probably be able to tell you. And then uh, when, it, when, when 
when they sold uh, Bay Beach Community bought it. This is a giant puddle right here. Looks like a ghost town. You know, the thing that was interesting is you got a lot of boats back here. I wonder why they decided to leave their boats because in addition to losing every single car on the island, their boats were thrown around like rag dolls after Ian. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, they were all back in the mangroves. And Alan, the pier guy, says originally 28, then it was 9, so they must have. Oh, there you go. I figured somebody would know. I'll have to, I've got another interview at like 10 or 10 15, so when right, the phone rings, I'll hand you this back. And... As soon as you get the call to the more important people, I will t <laughs> turn it down. <laughs> Yeah, but they're not riding around with us here. They're not getting the good. Somebody just texted me that they wanted me to go on, so I'm going to try and do more interviews than you. See, those <laughs> are pretty big boats that I would think are... Are they safe there? Well, we're going to find out. Looks like most of them are tied off to the, to the pilings, but... I suppose it depends on how good your knot tying skills are. All the all the well all the resorts. I'm at four four resorts ish, five resorts with Harbor House. They were Bill Borchulis stopped by when I was in Times Square and he said he had to evacuate a hundred rooms. They had a you know, they had four hundred people, a hundred rooms. Mm -hmm. That's that's money down the drain. I know Margaritaville had guests they had to evacuate. Diamond Head did too. Yeah. yeah. They all have to as soon as it becomes mandatory evacuation, they have to do that. Do you uh when, when does season officially start? I mean, does it, is it starting now? or? Is, I mean, I know Usually Dave Nussbaum was on his way down to come back to the island because, uh, you know, they, they have a place down on the south end. But they stopped along the way to just kind of wait for it to pass. Yeah, usually, it's, you know, the kickoff to season is kind of, uh, kind of right, you know, the, the sand sculpting festival okay. in, in, in uh, late November. Going to drive through here and turn around. We are in Bay Beach, everybody. Uh, this is the new Grand View. This very is nice. The... It's very nice. Went to a couple meetings in there from London Bay when London Bay first pitched the. Uh, boy, projects have become so moot right now. All those big projects that are coming up. Yeah, we've got we've got some important things we're going to be dealing with here the next couple of days. And an election. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A local election, folks. <laughs> More important than a national election. Yeah, and, there's... And committee appointments, everything got pushed back. That, all that stuff was going to start this week. Yeah, it was. Boy, when you say evacuate, my wife takes it to heart, man. She just got right on <laughs> her... She's in Minneapolis today on her way to Nairobi. She's probably riding a lion. How long are they there? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks in Africa. They brought, I don't know, ten giant bags full of donations for the kids. Oh, that's great. And I ran into Tracy Dammerman last night. She said her and John just got back from Africa. They do the same thing. Bring uh, stuff over there for the kids. Yeah, I gave Kim a couple of Vote for Dan shirts <laughs> to take over <up> there. <laughs> Such a nice day right now. It's uh, the sun's trying to come out and it's breezy. Yeah, it's picking up a little bit. So it's uh, ten o'clock. The first wave of uh, of storm surge, according to Zach Malak on Wink, is three o'clock. My guess is because of high tide, and then he said it gets a little worse at seven, and then the main event midnight to one. Then it passes through and could be by the time the sun comes out tomorrow that everything's, you know, the the, the, the brunt of it has already passed us. Yeah, well, hopefully by this time tomorrow it's it's off the peninsula of Florida and back into the Atlantic. It's headed to, you think the eye mainly will uh, land in Sarasota? That they're going to get that's, hit the hardest? The, the last report I was able to see was at 5 o'clock and that's what they're saying, just Sarasota or pretend, between Sarasota and Venice, which will save Tampa at least from that massive storm surge 
on the dirty side of the storm. Still going to be windy and there's still going to be water, but it won't be as bad as had it hit just north of Tampa. Folks, like I mentioned a couple of times earlier, fmbstrong.org. If you want to contribute, they're collecting supplies. Uh, you can get on Amazon. They have an Amazon wish list. We already know from Ian what everyone's going to need. The sooner that you can help out, the easier it's going to be to get it over to people that need it on the beach. It goes right to Fort Myers Beach residents. You can make a monetary donation. It's an official 501c3, so you don't have to worry about your, your donation or your money. It's tax deductible, and they are set, ready to go. A nice big warehouse over there, so if you have a chance to make a donation or to send some supplies down now, we already know exactly what we're going to need to clean up. and. If, they're, if we do lose power, that people are going to need food and water. So if you can help out, that's the way to do it. And yeah, the, people were, were very helpful. Um, Semi-loads coming in from Wisconsin, Minnesota, Indiana, Illinois. I mean, there was a lot of lot yep. of stuff coming in, truckloads of things. And it all went to, it all went to very good use. And, the, you know, the great thing about this community is... When they were done with it and they didn't need it, they brought it back to go to someone else. Generators, chainsaws, yep. blowers, whatever. Um, obviously not mops and brooms, and, right. but the shovels. Generators especially. Yeah, yeah people, people were bringing them back to, to make sure that someone else. And I can tell you, we had, for generators, for instance, we had six, seven pages of names just on uh -huh. waiting list to I get generators. That. that. that um, you know. Then when they were done with it, they got power back. They'd bring it back, or they'd find another person to donate it to. There's another LCSO yep. deputy coming by and making sure nobody is doing anything they shouldn't be doing. Yeah, they're doing a great job. They they've been out all night. They've yep. been I mean since yesterday morning they've been they've been running around and and checking on things. Another one up here on the right. Yep. I came uh, when I came back on yesterday to grab some more stuff from our house. Oh, that's it. I gotta. You want to stay in here? Do you want to jump out, or what do you want to do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bag the, uh, kill the, uh, okay. kill this uh, video here and let him do his uh, interview, folks. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and we'll pop it back on when the mayor's done. The now have a look at this. This is St. And thank you to Price Electric.